G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Welcome to another training episode and you can thank me later but in this session I am going to save you so much time. Now for those of you that have been following for uh, quite some time you'll understand and realize that I use um, a, an Outlook add-in called Find Time. You might use this as well um, to schedule our meetings with external parties nice and easily. So basically we create a poll uh, and then we send that out and when it gets consensus, so people vote on their preferred times from a set of options, people vote on that time. When it reaches consensus, it automatically schedules a meeting, a Teams meeting, uh, and then we don't have to touch it. It's all done automatically for us. It saves all of that backwards and forwards and trying to negotiate times with different people via email. It just makes things nice and easy. Now, that is being replaced by something called scheduling poll in Outlook, and it's going to become a native feature. So we did have to go to the Outlook add-in store and add in fine time, but now uh, Microsoft are bringing that as a native feature uh, inside of Outlook, and it's not called fine time, it's called a scheduling poll. Now, as I said, it is going to be a native feature, and it's bringing all the capabilities of fine time into Outlook. Okay, both on the web and also in the clients. Now, Find Times, as I said, been able to be downloaded through the Outlook Add In Store uh, previously. Now, over the next few months, Scheduling Poll is going to be available to all users of Outlook on the web. Outlook uh, for Windows, the client, and also Outlook for Mac as well. So we're covering all the bases. So you can expect the same or similar uh, features and workflow as well. Now, what happens to find time for those of us who are using it? Well, it is going to be replaced by scheduling poll. Now, all new features uh, and functionalities and investment and bug fixes are going to apply to scheduling poll, but not find time. And in around about May of 2023, find time is going to be completely removed from the Outlook add install. So no new installs are going to be able to be done through that Outlook add install. Uh, app in, uh, sorry, the Outlook add install. Uh, it should still continue to work though for existing users. So for those of us that are still using it, um, it should still work. And in July 2023, the support will be completely removed. So when can we start using it? Well, Scheduling Poll has already rolled out to 100% of the customers worldwide, but that's obviously excluding GCC. It is now fully native uh, inside of Outlook on the web or OWA. So if you are a user of Outlook online, uh, then you will probably have already uh, seen this functionality in in your, uh, in your interface there. It's also available in the new Mac Outlook as well. And in Q2 of the calendar year 2023, it's going to be available for Outlook uh, Windows desktop clients as well. All right. Now, just a couple of FAQs before we dive into a demo. So what happens to the web page or the dashboard at findtime.microsoft.com? Well, post, um, well, as of now, post 12th of the 12th, 2022, users will be redirected to a new uh, URL. So a new web page. It is there, outlook.office.com forward slash findtime forward slash dashboard. Now, what do you need to do to transition? Well, you don't need to do anything, okay? It is a, a, a completely uh, unobtrusive transition here. Uh, and what about your existing polls? Well, they're gonna remain active and actionable through the dashboard and through the voting page as well. So if you do have any uh, existing um, polls at that time, then they will still continue to work as well. So let's have a look and dive in to a demo um, of the new scheduling poll. And we're gonna jump into Outlook Online. So you can see I'm logged in as Alex. I'm going to fire up a new email and let's, uh, I'll send a meeting request across to two different people. All right. So we'll do one that is uh, a Gmail account and we'll do another one that has uh, an Office 365 account as well. All right. So we'll do two. So we've got two people here. Um, let's just call this meeting request as the title. We'll jump into the body of the email here. And in the top under the three dots, what we will find is you will find this option here called scheduling poll. All right, nice and easy. 
bang, click, and here we go. We've got a panel that draw, uh, pops out from the side here. We can choose our time zone, the duration. Now, whether it needs to be within or the options that we select and are available to us are within meeting hours. If we toggle this off, then we can just choose any time that we want to as well. Uh, and then we can choose the date. We can move across, um, go to a different day if we want to, left and right. So let's go to another day. Uh, we might go to, let's go to the 23rd, all right? So let's flick on meeting hours uh, or flick off meeting hours. Uh, let's go to 22nd, 23rd must be uh, the weekend, is it? Uh, well, it's a Friday. So let's go 22nd and we will scroll down to a reasonable time. Let's go 10 a.m., we'll go 11.30, we'll go two. We might even go a different day. So let's scroll up and let's go to 23rd third and we might go 2.30 and 12.30 on the 23rd, okay? Now you can see at the top here that we do have a link to view all your polls. So I'm just gonna right click, open this in a new tab and that's going to take us to our dashboard where we can view any existing polls that we have in play. We can also see the default poll settings. So there's a few things that we can configure here as defaults. Notif notifications about poll updates, scheduling when attendees reach consensus, holding selected times in your calendar, which is an interesting one. So if you've got um, you know, multiple options so that you don't double book yourself, then you can hold uh, and have a tentative slot in your calendar for those sessions or for those meeting requests until it reaches consensus. Once it reaches consensus, they'll be removed and the meeting will be scheduled. Okay, so there's a few options there that we can set as defaults. Now, let me just uh, switch back into here. Let's go next. I'm happy with all of these. We don't worry about a location. We're going to leave this Teams meeting on. Now, we can manage this the this instance of these settings too, all right? So although we have the default, we've got the ability to manage this particular instance. But I'm just gonna leave it like so. We'll create the poll, okay? It embeds that into the body of the email and we can now send that across. So the recipients will now receive an email. They'll get uh, the option to uh, be able to respond to that poll. So let me just bring over um, this Gmail account. You can see that here's the email that's come through. I'll click on the email, open it up, and you can see here we've got five options, 30 minutes in duration, and we can then click the button that says vote. The dashboard's going to open up, okay? Um, and I'll select me. Um, or we have a verification code. So we need to send, uh, because we had the verify identity, okay? So we need to verify uh, that I am who I say I am. So we'll click send verification code. We'll open this up here. That's been sent, okay? We'll copy this verification code and we'll paste that in like so, and we'll hit submit. I can then choose my options. So I can choose my preference. Uh, I prefer this option. This one's okay. I can't do that one, can't do that one, can't do that one. And then we will vote, all right? So that person has submitted their vote. Now let's bring over uh, the other account here, which was this one. So we'll just move this across here. So here is Adele, uh, here's the meeting request from Alex. We will click the vote option here too, and that find time voting poll will open up. Now you notice the user experience is a little bit different because I'm already logged in, I'm authenticated, I've verified that I am who I say I am. So we can see here uh, the existing vote. So we've got one vote here, um, and we've got a couple of other votes here from other people. You can see this person has preferred this one. Uh, Alex has got this one. So we can do this one here. We can't do this one. We could do this one. We won't do that. We won't do that. And we will vote. All right, so now that vote's been submitted, let me drag this back across. Now you can see here that Alex, the meeting organizer, has got these notifications that are coming in. So you can see that your poll has a new vote from that person. This second one, we've got a meeting um, invita uh, uh, vote from Adele there, and you've got another notification that says the poll has reached consensus, the meeting's been scheduled, and the invite has been sent to all the users. So if I now drag Adele's back across, you can see that this meeting has now been scheduled and sent. 
Then Megan can RSVP. Yep, good to go. And then we've also got the other person here, uh, the Gmail account. Let's just pop back to the inbox. Meeting request. There it is, the Teams meeting, uh, and that person can then also now respond to that meeting to say that they are uh, coming as well, all right? So there we have it, find time, being replaced by scheduling poll, pretty much the same functionality, except we don't need to go and add it as, a, as an add-in. It's now going to be a native feature inside of Outlook, uh, both on the web, and it is also coming to the desktop clients. So that is going to save you a hell of a lot of time. Um, jump in, start using it, um, and it'll make your uh, meeting scheduling a hell of a lot easier. So thanks again. See you next time.